So there's a really cool thing about adjacency matrices, because if you take them to their power, you can actually end up looking at how many different walks you have from VI to VJ of that length of that power. Now, before we actually write anything down, I just want to disclaimer this with, at this moment in time, we will not expect you to know how to take matrices to the power. You will always be given the matrices to the power. That's work for another time in mathematics where you're going to learn how to actually multiply matrices and go from that point. So for this module, you just need to understand the concept of if you take a matrix to a power, it is going to give you the possible number or the number of different walks that you can go from one vertice to another vertice in. So let's write down that theorem. So let AJ represent the adjacency matrix for the graph G. Adjacency matrix or graph G. And we're going to let K be an arbitrary number that which is a natural number. So in other words, like one, two, three, and so on. I use the definition of a natural number where it begins at one, whether it begins at zero, doesn't make a huge difference. Okay, so let K be an element of natural numbers. Then the matrix to the power of K is equal to something where the elements are Z, I, J. Okay? My Zs, I'm just going to put a line through it because my 2s and my Zs tend to look alike. Which will have the Z, I, J element representing the number of different walks of length K from vertex V, I to vertex V, J. Representing the number of different walks of length k from vi to vj. So previously we had an adjacency matrix. We had the elements describing whether or not an edge existed between vi and vj. Now if we take their powers, the elements are actually now going to represent the number of different walks of that power length power, so the length of that power. So in other words, if it was a to the power of 2, the number of lengths of walks of length 2 from vi to vj. So let's go ahead and just do an example about this. Okay, so to do this, let's just draw a graph. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 vertices. And let's make it so that that one is connected to that one, and that one is connected to that one. So we have v1, v2, v3, v4. Let's work out its adjacency matrix. So this is something that you should be able to do. v1 to v1, nothing. v1 to v2, nothing. v1 to v3, something. v1 to v4, nothing. v2 to v1, nothing. v2 to v2, nothing. v2 to v3, something. v2 to v4, something v3 to v1 something, v3 to v2 something, v3 to v3 nothing, and v3 to v4 nothing. Then we have v4 to v1 nothing, v4 to v2 something, v4 to v3 nothing, v4 to v4 nothing. So there we have our adjacency matrix. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take our adjacency matrix to the power of 2. Okay, so taking it to the power of 2, we don't expect you to be able to do. So by miracles, we have A to the power of 2 gives us 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay. So now what this is, all the elements are saying. So this element is saying, so we have Z, 1, 1 is equal to 1. It's saying that there is one walk of length 1 from V1 to V1. So one walk of length 1 from V1 
to V1. Now, I already messed up. What did I mess up by doing? Okay, so of length K. So one walk of length 2, because we have a 2 there. So we have the 1, and that's where the 1 comes in. So there's one walk of length 2 from V1 to V1. How do we get that? Let's go to our graph and we say, okay, we start at V1. We want to end back up at V1. How can we go about this? Well, we take a stroll to V2 and then a stroll back. And that is a walk of length 2 because you circulated two, well, you walk two edges. So the walk is V1, V3, V1. So let's try this again or explain another one. Let's look at this one here. So what that one there is saying is that we have Z, 1, 2, 3, 3, and 3 is equal to 2. So it's saying we have two walks of length 2 from V3 to V3. Let's go to our graph and actually look at this. And I'm just neating up the graph quick. Okay, so let's go ahead and check. So it has to be of length 2 only. So we start at V3, we go to V2, and we can come back. So here we have V3, V2, and V3. Let's try another one. We start at V3. We can go to V1, and we can come back. So we have V3, V1, and V3. So again, the elements are given us the number of walks of length of the power of that matrix e from your VI to VJ. So let's try one that isn't, you know, back to itself. So let's try um, Z21. Okay, so if you're looking at Z21, it's the second row and the first column. So it says there's one. So what is that telling us? We have one walk of length two from V1. Well, let's do this excessively like it from V2 to V1. So one walk of length 2 from V2 to V1. So let's just clean up our graph again. And I drew something that shouldn't exist. So there we have our graph again. So now we're going from V2. And we're going to end up at V1. And it says there's only one way that we can get there with a walk of length 2. And that is basically we can go like that and go like that. So we have V2, V3, V1. So again, the elements of the matrix E that is raised to the power gives us the number of walks, distinct walks possible, of that power, length, power so length of that power. So we're going to actually continue that example and look at the adjacency matrix to the power of 3 to see if we can find any walks of length 3. So let's just redraw our example graph and the adjacency matrix first before we continue. Okay, so taking that matrix to the power of 3, and again, you don't have to know how to do this yet. You will learn how to do it in your maths courses. You're going to get 0, 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, 3, 2, 2, 3, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0. I will link you somewhere that will do the calculations for you if you want to do some random practice. Okay, so there we have the adjacency matrix to the power of 3. Now, remember, each element of this matrix is indicating the number of walks of length 3 from VI to VJ. So if we look at this one here, so Z11, which is equal to 0, it's saying there's 0 walks 
of length 3 from V1 to V1. Okay, if we look over here, we have Z to 3, which is equal to 3. It's saying there's 3 walks of length 3 from V2 to V3. So let's actually go and see if we can do this, if we can find these walks. So we have V2, and we want to get to V3. So let's go ahead. We can go of length 3. So you can say V2 to V3, V3 to V1, and V1 to V3. So that's one walk. Okay, let's try again. Let's start at V2. We can go V2 to V4. V4 to V2. So we can go back and then go to V3. So that's another walk. Now it says there's at least three walks here. So how else can we go about it? Okay, so let's start at V2 again. We can go V2 to V3. V3 to V2. And V2 to V3 again. V2 to V3. V, back to V2. Back to V3. So there are three walks of length 3 from V2 to V3. So again, the elements of the matrices which is to the power, the adjacency matrix C to the power, gives us the number of walks of the length of that power, so the length k, if it's to the power of k, from our vi to our vj.